What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a great day. A couple days ago, I did a poll on my Instagram asking if I should create a video on how to deploy a Laravel website on a server. And the responses were great. And now we're here, me creating a video for you guys on how to deploy a Laravel project. If you want to have more influence on the videos that I make or the series, go follow me on Instagram because I do a lot of polls and you can easily send me a DM on things that you need. As you could see on my screen right now, we have our website where we have a login system and we have a blog. But as you can see, everything is deleted right here because I want to transfer this database from my local host to my web server. Honestly, there are a lot of different hosting websites where you can buy a domain. I'm not going to tell you which one is good or bad. Usually my go-to is domain.com and I have it open right here. So it's domain.com. But you could also use other companies such as GoDaddy or Bluehost. I will add an affiliate link in the description down below. So if you do need one, go through my link so I can earn a little bit from it too. Whether you are using Bluehost, GoDaddy or Domain.com, you need to use your cPanel to deploy your Laravel project. You need to use your cPanel or FTP credentials to deploy your Laravel project. It can also be done through Git, but since I haven't used Git on my YouTube, I want to do it through FTP. So I have already bought a domain to save us time. You could go to the description down below in order to buy a domain. And if you already have one, let's log in because what we need to do is to get our FTP credentials. So let me log in. If you're using domain.com, you need to click on hosting in the top navigation. And on the left panel, you can see something called FTP management. So let's click on it. You could either create a new account or use the account that we have right here. You can edit the user and you can change your password. So let me actually set the password. All right, let's edit the user. Whether you're using your cPanel inside your domain or FileZilla, the idea behind it is exactly the same. Now make sure that your account is enabled. And like I said, whenever you want to deploy your website, you need to use FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. And it's basically connecting two computers together so what we need to do is to open a new tab and go to google.com, search for FileZilla. And most of you guys already have it because you use it to upload HTML websites as well. Now let's open the first link. So FileZilla-project.org. And right here, you need to download it. And I already have it installed. So pause the video and I'll see you back in a second. All right, let me go to a new screen. Let's open FileZilla. And as you can see, we need to add some credentials right here. The host is FTP dot followed by the domain name. So let's say code with diary for me dot com. Now we can grab the username from domain.com. So let's go back. The username is this one right here. Let's paste it in right here. Now the password is the password that I just created. For the port, it is either 21 if you use FTP but if you use SFTP, which is an encrypted version of FTP, you need to use 22 or 2222. But since I'm using FTP, I'm using 21. So let's quick connect. So let's click on OK. And as you could see, it has been connected. On the right panel, you can see a couple files and folders in here. But the one that we need is the public underscore HTML one. But before I continue on, I want to set up our database first. So let's go back to the browser. And as you can see right in the left panel, you can see a MySQL management. So let's open it. Let's add a new MySQL database. Let's call it Laravel block. Click on next. Create a username. Let's say code with Dari. Password is, I'll create it. And don't enter data right here that you don't remember because we need to add these credentials inside our .env file. All right, let's save it. We don't need to set the privileges to something else because we actually don't need it. These are the basic tasks that we need to do. So let's save it. And as you can see right here, we can manage our database. So let's do that. We have our database credentials right here. And as you could see, we could go to PHP my admin for a database user. So let's click on it. Now the next step is to save our local database that we have and import it right here. 
with this button right there. If you can't do that or you don't have your database anywhere, you could basically create your nat you could basically create your new database. Now, if you use your local PHP my admin, you could easily click on export and import it right here. But what I have done throughout the course was using CLI, so I want to MySQL dump it through the CLI as well. Let's go to the terminal. Let me open a new tab. Now, what we need to do is to CD into our desktop. And in here, we need to create a MySQL dump. So we're basically going to export our database. So let's say MySQL dump space dash dash databases space. Then we need to set the user. So dash dash user is equal to root space. You could also set the password right there. But the best way to do it is to just write down dash dash password and to not set it equal to a value. And what this will do is basically ask you for a password after you have performed this command. Then we need to say which database we want to dump. So in my case, it's Laravel block. Then we need to say greater than, followed with the name of our SQL file. So let's say Laravel block dot SQL. Hit enter. And like I just said, this will ask for a password. And be aware that this isn't the login password of your computer or laptop. It's basically your MySQL password. So let's say, for me, Dari1234. Hit enter. Now if we go to our desktop, let me close off FileZilla. You can see a new file right here called Laravel block. Right now, we're ready to import it. So let's go to Chrome. Let's click on import. Well, we first need to click on Laravel block, so the database. Click on import. Choose the file. And let's go to desktop and open the laravel.sql. Let's click on go. Now our database has been imported with 61 queries. And as you can see, we have our tables filled underscore jobs, migrations, password resets, posts, and users. What we need to do next is to go to FileZilla. So let me open it again. And let me actually make it bigger. So what we need to do is to find our Laravel project first. So mine is stored on users, Dari, a file called desktop right here, obviously. I have a workspace. And in here, I have Laravel 8 complete block. So let's open it, open Laravel block. Whenever you're uploading a basic HTML website, you usually will upload it right into the public underscore HTML that we have right here. Now, that's not something you want to do when using a Laravel application. This is mainly because everything inside the public underscore HTML folder will be visible for all visitors. And that's not what we want, right? You don't want to give users or hackers access to your .env file, for instance. So on the right panel, which is our shared server, we need to create a new folder, so a new directory called Laravel block. Let's go inside Laravel block. And obviously it's empty. What we need to do next is to select everything from the left panel. So control A, but we don't need the public folder. So let's command or control and click on public to unselect it. Now you might wonder why we're not uploading the public folder. Well, we have no sensitive data inside the public folder. So we want to upload everything else right there. So users have no access to it. And then we want to upload everything inside the public directory into the public underscore HTML directory. And before we do that, be aware that this might take 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of your application and your internet speed. So what we need to do is to right click and click on upload. And I will pause the video and I will be back when it has been uploaded successfully. Now that it's done, we need to place the files from our public folder that we have right here inside the public underscore HTML. So let's select everything inside the public folder. Let's click on upload. And this won't take long because it's not a lot of files. All right, this has been done successfully. So let's go to the browser. Let's change the URL to codewithdari.com. And as you can see, we're getting an internal server error. And that's because we need to change a couple of things inside two files. Now let's go back to FileZilla. 
The first thing is the file that we have on our screen right now, which is index.php. So you could either download it and open it with a code editor, or you could easily say view and edit, which will open it. Well, let me make the screen. Well, we'll open it in a new tab, one second. All right, right here, let me zoom in. Whenever we register the auto loader, right here, so register the auto loader, you can see that this file is going back one directory and then trying to find the vendor directory. And then it will call the autoload.php. Now this file does exist, but the path is a little bit different, right? Since we place our vendor directory inside Laravel block. So what we need to do is to go right before vendor, write down Laravel block, forward slash. So it's going to the root directory, find a folder Laravel block, vendor, and then it's looking for a file called autoload.php. And we need to do the same thing for the run the application as well. So right here, variable app is requiring bootstrap forward slash app.php, but it needs to be Laravel block forward slash bootstrap. Now let's save it. Let's close it off. Let's go back to FileZilla. And it's asking, well, are the files changed? Let's say yes. And are we done? Well, no, because we need to go to our .env file, obviously. So let's go back one directory, open Laravel block, and let's edit the .env file as well. So let me open it, make it bigger. Let me zoom in. In our .env file, now inside the .env file, we're using environment variables, or we created environment variables that are being used all over our application. And even our database connection right here needs to be changed. So first, the app URL, which is https colon forward slash forward slash www.codewithdari.com. Now for our database connection, the connection is MySQL. The host is not localhost anymore. And well, let me actually show you how you could get your credentials on domain.com. Right here, you have your database name, server name, and the username. So let's add it that. Our database host is info 500a3.domain.com mysql.com. The port is all right. The database name is Laravel and I will change my username and password and I will blur it out. Let's go back to FileZilla. Let's click on yes. Let's go back to the browser and let's refresh our host. Depending on your connection, this might take a while. So let's refresh the browser. As you can see, everything has been uploaded to the server. Now what's next? Well, let's test our database. Let's register. Let's create an account. So code with Dari info. Let's add a password. Let's register. All right, this works. And as you could see, a user has been added, so our database connection works as well. This was it for this video. I showed you how you could easily upload a website through FileZilla. This isn't something I recommend to do because I usually clone a GitHub repo right into my server, which is way easier. But for beginners, I think that this is the way to go. Thanks for watching this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.